All right, now this is my third video in a row that I've actually done, so I'm not going to get cranky. I think I can get through it. All right, so let's talk, Geos. We are on lesson number five of unit number four. All right, that's our deal here. And what we're going to talk about specifically today is that we're going to not just say that the triangles are any kind of triangles that are out there, but specifically that they're right triangles that are out there. Okay, now this, this first slide is actually a really good indicator of kind of like whether or not you know your shortcuts. And your shortcuts are the ones that we've been talking about over the last couple of lessons, lesson three and lesson four. Now, let's see if you got those shortcuts under control and how they relate possibly to right triangle congruence. Now, we know that if we make a right triangle, you're going to automatically get a right angle in the corner. So you're going to get an angle concept right out of the get-go. Now, what they've tried to do in the past is they've tried to make you understand that when you talk about a right triangle, <laughs> you're talking about really specific parts. And instead of calling these sides that are all the way around a triangle, they refer to the ones that are next to the right angle as legs of the triangle and the one across from the 90-degree angle as the hypotenuse. And they try to make sure that you, you're like, well, maybe we could come up with triangle names that would be specific to the right triangle deal. Now, I'm not a firm believer in this because when I would look at, say, something like this following picture that's right here, instead of referring to this as called a leg-leg variety because they're looking at just the legs of those, they, I would really say that a leg-leg in old terminology would really specifically be a side, an angle, and then another side, which is really a side-angle side. Now, I'd almost prefer you to remember that it's really a side-angle side when you're looking at these. Don't remember it as a leg-leg. That's no reason for that. Side-angle seg would be totally, perfectly reasonable. Okay. If I looked at this next guy that was down here, I'd be like, hey, I don't want to remember that as a hypotenuse and an angle. That's what they want you to think of it as. Ha! Who, who knows what that's called? I would actually refer to it as an angle, an angle, and a side. That's an AAS, something that we've been doing all the time in the past. So you're like, okay, what is really new here, G? Um, well, Let's kind of keep looking. Is there new ones that we're really seeing? If I looked at this one, I, they want you to say that it's really called an LA. You're like, ooh, that's an, a leg and an angle is really what you've got. But no, that's really nothing new. That's actually a angle side angle is really what that one is. So none of these first three really need to be anything new for you. You're just like, I already know what to call that. I have an old name for it. Now, here's where the star goes in. The star is on this one down here at the bottom. Now, your first thoughts are that when you look at this, you get to go, wait a second. That looks like it's an angle, a side, and another side, but the angle isn't wedged in between. So this would be an A. S S. Oh no, I spelled a bad word. It's ass. Yeah, you get to say these words when you're in geometry and you're like, oh no. Now, if your teachers in the past have said anything about this, that that you can't do an angle side side. In a regular normalized triangle, angle side side is a no-no. So what we've said is, is that if you do this in a right triangle, it's okay. And instead of calling it angle side side, which would be inappropriate, they call it the hypotenuse and the leg. The hypotenuse and the leg is instead. But the idea here is that it has another name, HL, but it's really for the, not the wrong ass, but the right ass, <laughs> see, because it's a right triangles is the only kind it works in. So instead of calling it a right ass, we'll call it an HL, a hypotenuse leg is what we'll call it. Okay. Now that only works in right triangles. So keep that in mind that that's one of your extra ones that you can use 
in only right triangles. Now it's right triangle congruence again over here in this corner. And it says, okay, if I've got a right angle in the corner, is there enough to say that these triangles are congruent? Now you look at them, you're like, oh, that's an angle, a side, and an angle. This one is an angle, a side, and an angle. And I would be like, angle, side, angle is the way to prove that guy. You're done. You got it. Those two triangles would definitely be congruent to each other. Angle, side, angle. Old rule. If I was going to do this one, I'd be like, there's an angle, another angle, and another angle. Um, I'm sorry to say, triple A, there's no such shortcut. <laughs> those triangles are not congruent. Okay? So those are not congruent. You can't call AAA to save you in these particular deals. Now, if I was down here in this guided practice question, I'd be like, okay, I've got an angle, which is a right one. I've got this side and this side. The reflexive one would be in between the two. And if I went around that triangle to give me the right deal, it would be an angle side side. And you'd be like, oh, it's not, it's not supposed to work. But if it's a right triangle, we wouldn't call it the right angle side side. We'd call it hypotenuse leg. And the answer would be that those two triangles are congruent to each other. So you really have, and in your repertoire, you have five shortcuts that you can use. Side 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 works. Side angle side works. Angle side angle works angle angle side and the very special hl which only applies to right triangles now the ones that don't work that are no no's so i'm gonna put here no no is angle side side in any other normal triangle or triple a these are ones that you cannot use all right so this real chart right here tells you which ones you should definitely know. Now, let's try a proof to see if we've got it under control. And remember, I'm not a firm believer in just throwing things out there. Let's talk about that all of this information right here that you would start with would definitely land on line number one, the given information, right? So they're saying PQR and SRA are right triangles with right angles at Q and S. So they put a right angle here, and right angle there. And they put the PR and PRQ and PRS, PRQ and PRS are the same. Now, all of those are green because they would all end up on line number one. The only thing I think you'd really need to add would be that this line segment has got to be the same in both triangles. That'd be line number two because its reflexive property is what's going on there. Now, as I start to look at it, you're like, ooh, I got three parts. I got an angle, a side, or an angle, and a side. So that'd be angle, angle, side. That'd be line number three would be angle, angle, side. And those two triangles would definitely be congruent to each other. And that's exactly what you're trying to prove right there. You have all of the information in your guidelines to write a two-column proof. You know exactly what to do. Now get after it and go do it. I'm going to pause and you can see if you did it right. And those magically appear. I hope that you pause the videos in between those two so that you can give it a try on your own. But ultimately, here's what it was. It gave you some right triangle or right angles, and it gave you a couple of them that were matching. That was the green. And then I did PR was the same as PR because that was a reflexive side. And then I did that the two triangles were congruent to each other. Now, I'm just going to extend this just one little thought. What if the triangle thing said that you wanted to prove that uh, PS was the same as PQ? Would this be extra stuff? And you're right, if it was extra and you were stuff that you didn't really need and you were pushing beyond, that extra stuff would end up here in line number four for what you're trying to prove extra. And the reason for it would be CPCTC because all extras go after triangle congruence. And you, it always works the same exact way every single time. All right? So try those problems out when you do these kind of things. All right? Now let's take a look over here. Let's see if we can write a two-column proof plan 
for this particular idea. So here's our concept. We've got V and X are right angles. There's a right angle and there's a right angle. And W is a midpoint. Now, all that stuff would definitely show up on line one. Now, your first gut instinct is the word of this word midpoint. You're just like, what the heck? What, if it's a midpoint, if that point is in the middle between V and X, then that would mean that this line would have to be exactly the same as that line. That is a reasonable piece of information that you just came up with, and it probably should be on line number two because of a midpoint. There's your reason. Those things that you just wrote in green, yeah, they're line number two. Um, I've got two pieces. I need three. Let's see if I can get a third one. Um, you know, we're not, we're not. Hey, vertical angles right there. Line number three, vertical angles is what I'm going to put in that spot. Triangles, would they be congruent? You got three pieces. What would the triangle congruence be? You have an angle, a side in between, and another angle. So line number four would definitely be angle, side, angle, and you'd prove the triangles are congruent. Guys. There's the game plan. Write the proof. I'm not even going to write that guy out because I know you exactly know what to do. You got this. Okay? Now, what about this guided practice one over here? Let's talk about what our game plan should be here. Let's start with green. Ooh, here's some information right here that they gave you, and they even put it in the picture as line number one or the given. Okay? Get that part in. You can do it. Now, why would they say that the lines are parallel? Yeah, why are they parallel? Well, that probably means that this angle right here in this corner is the same as this angle in this corner because they are, you said it, alternate interiors. Whoa, that's awesome. I've got an alternate interior angle. That's easy. I can mark those down and get them figured out. Um, also, if two triangles are sharing a side, maybe I could say that this line is shared and those two would be the exact same. Those two lines would be the matching or BD is BD by the reflexive property. And now I got three parts again. An angle. Oh, man, I want to zoom in on that because I want to see what's going on. Oh, where'd it go? Come back. Come back. There you are over here. Okay. I've got an angle, an angle, and a side outside of it. So I would gather that my answer is got to probably deal with line number four. And I should have done that in a different color. Turn over colors. I'll pick blue. Four would be an angle, angle, side scenario. And... That would prove that the triangles are congruent to each other. Now, look carefully. Was that what they wanted to prove? Oh, man, it's not what they wanted to prove. They wanted to prove that BC was parallel to that one. Well, that would mean that there's probably an extra line that's going on here. And that extra line would seem like it should be CPCTC. I'm actually going to change this to... BC is equal to, because I don't think you're going to see a parallel one like that. If I made it equal to, then the reason would be CPCTC. And I want to stay consistent. I don't think we're ready for that parallel concept yet. I, it would be pushing too far. All right. So make it an equal. Yeah. All right. There we go. Extra piece, extra piece, CPCTC. That's what it would be. Write the proof out. And believe it or not, guys, somewhere along the line, you're going to have to remember old stuff. Old stuff is coming back. You can't be one of these people that thinks that everything's going to be new. You got to get everything that you know from the past. Okay. All right. Geo is ready to move on to, uh, to the number six unit. And just as a reminder, there's the four, uh, the five shortcuts that you know, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and, of course, HL for the right ass. All right. See, I said it again. I'm going to get fired. Goodbye.